I apologize for not reminding the board. You have a document there with some suggested changes that were combination of Director Myers and Tom. So, uh, view of the minutes. So certainly, oh. somebody has a different recollection of things. Oh no, I apologize for any mistakes that I might have made. Well, are we sure there were mistakes first? <laughs> I'm fairly confident. So, for the record, we just incorporate the changes as changes within the motion. Unless any of the directors here have a different view of it before we make that. So, I, I see none. So. Let's make the changes recommended by directors McDonald and uh, Meyer. And as to the uh, minutes, items B and C, where uh, only some of the directors are present, do we simply accept that for those of us that were present, or do we abstain? Or uh, accept? I said that's been our practice. Okay, that's fine. Mr. Chairman, I, I would just record one uh, abstention on A, since I was not there. Otherwise, I can vote on the rest. Um, I'd just like to uh, voice uh, appreciation for the fact on item D and a few others that we've now changed that from approval of financial statements to acceptance of financial statements. And I, I assume that is a significant change uh, because we've voiced some concerns about in the past about whether we're really putting a stamp of approval on something that we don't totally understand. So I just want to say I think that's a great change to do that. And I also appreciate it because of a few emails I've had back and forth with, with Heather over the past, past few days that, that uh, a lot of things are moving in the right directions in terms of uh, upgrading our financials and, and updating them in, in positive ways. Thank you. Bernie? I was remiss. Uh, I also want to thank the executive director for his memo dated May, May 14, uh, dealing with items HD through HH. Which I appreciate This is a veritable love piece. <laughs> <laughs> Some days are better. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you say that. Okay, good. Uh, any, any other questions on this? You took action on it. No. Okay, I'm going to call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Just with the abstention no, notice. No, no. Okay. Good, that uh, deals with the consent calendar. We'll now go to staff reports. Uh, Executive Director Mitch Stalker. Uh, yes, I. <laughs> I don't have anything to report. I, Dave has a, a PowerPoint that I hope that we can get through sort of quickly, so I would just like to have my time to go for that. Right to you, Dave. All right. Could, uh, uh, Dave, uh, as you're getting up, or Mitch, are you going to reflect the grant application that just went out as well? That you were on? Could you tell us about that? What was that, Mitch? Somebody. Yeah. Grant application. The grant application? Fishing game. Fishing game grant application. You were involved, maybe? <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> I'm not understanding. Ross not Taylor? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Dave, please explain. <laughs> You're going to work with clients. Long meeting, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, to address that? Well, staff has been working with, um, uh, pardon me? Caltrop. Caltrop. For a grant application in the Eel River. Um, to address, uh, I guess it's it's for a study uh, to assessment. look at assessment. Assessment. You guys want to let John do this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm helping him. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. To do an assessment uh, to uh, to evaluate some of the, um, the the creek crossings of the railroad and, and potential for improvement for fish ladders, uh, etc. In the Eel River Canyon. In the Eel River Canyon. Which the Eel River people let them know. Stay here, here that we're working on that. Uh, anyway, thanks for the report. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm going to go through this kind of quickly. I, I, I know that some of this, some of these pictures you may have seen, but I can really go through this quick. But this, the agenda is to go over all of our contracts. So we got two signal contracts. We got the urgent, re urgent repair contract at King Salmon. Uh, fish and game dewatering, the timber bridge contract, the urgent repair contract for Shellville, 
and then we recently re re uh, finished the Black Point uh, fender repair. So we've got a, a lot of construction going on. We're spending about two million, two million a month. Um, on the signal contract, uh, that's TCRP 32.9 for 5.8 million, 95% complete. And uh, we are we are currently starting to test the signals, and I've got I've got actually some uh, a movie of a, of a signal in operation. Uh, here are some of the gate assemblies, and just about all of these have now been uh, installed. Um, these are the signal houses. There's one installed. These are some of the categories one, two, and three, where they're repairing the existing um, cabinets. Uh, there you see, uh, I believe this is in um, Nevada, um, and you can see the arms in place. Um, here's one with it actually testing it. You can see that the, the, the uh, arms are down. Um, this is at, um, I, I believe, in uh, East, East River Road. Uh, that's uh, fully uh, installed. You can see that the gates are down. And, this is a quick little movie showing it in operation. Wow. That's cute. Action. That's, that's East River Road. Where's the track? Back to the future. This is where we're back. So this is the second signal contract, which is again TCRP 32.9, um, 4. Point, almost 5 million, and uh, a lot of the work has progressed. You know, a lot of the same sort of photos, and uh, they're scheduled for completion in July. King Salmon, um, uh, as you all know, we 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 have phase one was fully permitted. And we're about 95% complete. We're waiting to uh, do phase two to complete phase one as well. And the Coastal Commission uh, met last month and they approved our contract, or our, our permit. Um, so we're, we're quite excited because we uh, hope to be back out finishing phase two in the next couple of weeks. This is just a couple of shots of what, it, what the first phase looked like. Um, and then here's some of are removing the debris. Um, the debris has been removed and a new, uh, new riprap has been placed. The uh, Shellville dewatering uh, is now, all the temporary levee repairs are 100% complete and it's completely dewatered. De uh, that's about a 600 acre lake that is uh, some of the shots that you've all seen before, I think. That's uh, completed to repair the major, that's where the major flooding came from. Um, that's what the flood looks like, that's what it looks like today. Uh, there's another shot of the flood waters, and that's what it looks like today. Uh, we're, we're awarded um, our Shellville embankment repair uh, to July Brothers slash Cooper Crane for 1.3 million. They are totally mobilized, and uh, they're due to completion in June. Here is uh, one of the minor washouts where they're actually compacting uh, the washout with the rails in place. Here's another little bit larger one where they elected to uh, remove the, the rail to, uh, to get in there and do the compaction. Um, here is some of the... the uh, rail, or the, the ties rather, that they're discovering as they're uh, doing their, some of their excavation out there and they're storing those to uh, dispose of properly. Here are our flood control, uh, some of our flood control structures that we're uh, putting in to uh, help alleviate future uh, washouts. There's a couple more shots of that. That's a concrete slurry there. So that, as I said, that's scheduled to be complete in June. Um, the timber, uh, contract, timber bridge contract, T3, 
was awarded to Cooper uh, against Gelati Brothers slash Cooper Crane for three point nine million, and uh, that is currently held up by the injunction of the City of Nevada. Uh, however, we were allowed to do two two bridges: the Wingo Bridge, which is complete, and uh, this is the Railroad Slough Bridge, which is complete. This is um, some damage that was done by a, a mariner to our Black Point Bridge, uh, and that has been completely uh, repaired. So, the last thing I want to just give you a quick, quick report on is we're, we're now uh, reviewing uh, another administrative draft. I think we're about 95% complete. Is that right, Maya? And um, we've got all of our studies, uh, and I, I think based on staff's review, uh, we're probably we're estimating right now to um, be able to circulate this in in, in June. So, uh, any questions? Mitch, you want to say something? I, I wanted to ask a question. If, if assuming a good result by the court of appeals. How long the trackway contract is? Is how big basically? Is it like ten to twelve million? Uh, it's it's in the ten million range, and uh, HNTB is basically uh, I put them on notice that we wanted this. Uh, so if we get the notice today or tomorrow or next week or next month, that we will be ready to go out to bid, uh, which will probably be about a six week process or so, um, and. It, it's you know it's a sizable contract so but but if we're able to start that in the next month or so I, I've got high expectation that we will be done by the end of the year. And and the bridge contract that's subject to the injunction of three point nine, would you be ready to go right away with that? Yes, yes. In fact, um, I know that uh, Cooper Crane's attorney has has been um, you know, well posted on what's going on. And, and they're very excited, and have I've actually gone out in the field with them in the last um, last few weeks, so that when we do get the, the notice, that they are prepared to order the materials and get right back um, in the swing of things. So they're they're they are standing ready, and we also have a movable bridge contract repair that has we we've, we've um, uh, bid. And we have a recommendation to award, so as soon as um, we, we have that clearance, we can move forward with the uh, award of that, possibly uh, as soon as we could get the board together to approve it after uh, we get clearance. To, to the points that were just raised, do we have any assessment of additional cost due to the delays in the lawsuit that are being tendered to us, are there, what, what else is coming that we're not aware of and how is this affecting the project? Has it been quantified, including anything from the operator side? Yeah, I know that's a compound question. But. Right, well, you know, all the work that we are doing right now, um, it, which is substantial, I, I don't believe that, that we're going to incur any, any costs um, on these contracts that we're currently able to go forward on. The, um, and I don't think there's going to be anything with the track contract, which is another sizable, sizable amount of the repairs. But it, so it really, I think, focuses on the bridge contract that we that we held up. And I, I think Chris, you probably have got have you got any correspondence with them on that? Yes, we we expect a claim of about four hundred thousand um, dollars. But uh, if uh, if the court of appeals rules in our favor. We would just pass that cost right on to the city of Nevada. I would assume along with some others. Correct. Thank you. So that's that's it, I guess. Any more questions? It's exciting. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. On, the draft e, on the draft EIR, do you think we'd be able to get that in our June meeting? Uh, I, I'm not sure how, how how we want to move forward with that, Chris, but. But I, it's possible that, uh, that it'll, it, you know, it probably wouldn't be issued at a meeting, but that it would be issued to, uh, 
during the month of, uh, of June. Because mm -hmm. that, uh, there might be some things that uh, hold it up, but uh, you know, I mean, it, its actual compilation is virtually complete. Any other questions? Bernie? For the first time. Um, so, what happens after it's issued? The, the process was. There'll be a comment period. Uh, one thing that has not yet been decided is whether or not uh, you want to hold a public hearing on, on the EIR. Public hearing is optional, and that's something that's not been addressed by the board. It's something that you should think about um, between between now and your next meeting. Um, the uh, and, and you know, if we were to hold a hearing, when do we hold it, and uh, where are we to hold it? And, and Chairman, as a follow-up to that, um, at the moment of release. There's a, is it 45 day? 40, 30 to 45 day. So at some point within that, if the board decided to have a public hearing before us, that would be the, somewhere in that period of time. Right. Probably sometime in the early, early first half of July. After the close of the comment period? No, during the comment period. During the comment period. And you'd have, you'd have a hearing and then you would, after the close of that, you'd come back and we'd have to determine whether we'd certify it or not. And then if it's certified and there's a legal challenge, what's the process? Um, well, um, first of all, I mean, you know, there's several things that you, know, you would have to, um, there would have to be action on the EIR, either certification or rejection or uh, adoption of overriding considerations. Um, if uh, if uh, the uh, if this uh, uh, EIR were were uh, challenged, uh, the uh, probably we would be recommending immediate removal of federal court and subsequent referral to the STB, and, and I suspect the STB would make short work of of, of the challenge. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Good report, thanks, Dave. Yes, Exciting to see some noise and movement. <laughs> yes. That's great. Okay, um, Chris, do you have anything to report as Uh No, I, I, there was one thing uh, John asked me to comment on. Um, as we've been in negotiations with uh, CBS Outdoor concerning the, um, the uh, outdoor signs, there's been controversy for quite some time. It looks like we've reached a preliminary agreement and that they're going to make a proposal, probably you'll see it by meeting in June, uh, to um, remove uh, the signs that are clearly, uh, that there's no dispute about uh, in terms of their ownership and, and their location, uh, thanks to the efforts of Humboldt County, which helped us clarify which signs were beyond dispute. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, uh, CBS has uh, agreed to, that uh, it will uh, issue a, a replacement check to us for the uh, rental which accrued during the year 2007 without any, uh, um, uh, with, with, the, with the notation that it's not a renewal of, of the agreement to, of any challenge. So it, it looks like there will be about $14,000 coming in um, in the next 30 days. Uh, from CBS outdoors, so as we get this finalized. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's not gone yet. <laughs> Good. Well, thank you. Uh, at this point, uh, we'll call for the operator report, John. Well, we've covered most of the issues. I did uh, I want to tell the board that on April 22nd, uh, um, Dave Anderson accompanied me in, in entertaining uh, two FRA signal inspectors. Uh, you may recall that uh, NWPCO filed an application to discontinue the, uh, the signal devices on the three movable bridges, uh, basically because uh, they've been vandalized and stripped, and uh, the estimated cost of repairs was around $3 million. So we filed a formal application with the Federal Railroad Administration Safety uh, Division and, and 
this inspection was uh, intended to uh, give them a field field view of uh, of the systems um, that used to be in existence. So we don't have a we don't have any indication whether they'll rule favorably or not. Uh, and there's no time schedule uh, by which they have to rule. Um, but uh, the estimated cost of these repairs was around $3 million, which we translated roughly into 30,000 cross ties. And my preference would be to have 30,000 cross ties. I should also tell, tell you when you're talking about uh, uh, how fast can we get the railroad repaired, that uh, when you add up the um, the costs of the track contract and, and bridge contract and finishing the signal contract. Um, it, if you spend at the rate, uh, I think Dave said we're spending at the rate of two million a month, um, and that's consuming all of our bridge loan of three million dollars. Um, as you look forward, we are in, we are financially constrained as to how fast we can do the work. And there's no solution for that. Uh, if the county of Sonoma uh, had uh, had uh, uh, issued the bridge loan, then then uh, I think uh, we'd be much better off. But it is a, a concern in terms of when we'll actually be able to get the work done and run trains across states. Great crossing. Uh, before you move on, uh, one of the other issues that can affect timing is the uh, whatever agreements need to be uh, completed with Union Pacific, including some trailing issues with the NCRA. Is there any current activity in there, or is it premature to even have that? Well, no, I, th I think that's another thing that needs to be done, uh, Alan. I, um, the trailer train people are taking an inventory of all their cars from that are left on the property, and the biggest uh, biggest group of cars that um, are still on the property are owned by Trailer Train, but since Trailer Train's owned by all the railroads, then Union Pacific's the delivering, the carrier that brought the cars to uh, NCRA, and so Union Pacific is the one who's really stuck with the disposition. So, I mean, I think, and, and Chris and I have talked about this a lot of times, we've got, uh, we've got uh, the car hire issue, we've got, uh, what, do, what do we do with the cars? At one point, the UP wanted us to buy them all. I'm not sure where they are now or where trailer train is. Uh, and then there's a cleanup of the, of the contaminated uh, yard sites uh, that UP is obligated to perform uh, uh, in a 17-year period. So those are still outstanding issues. They haven't reached the top of my pile yet, but I, I think UP is getting there. Now I should say, on a, I'm not doing much marketing. Um, I, had to, I had to quit. Um, but I do get a call about once a week now, uh, because truck costs have gone up so much. I used to get a call maybe once, uh, once a month. Um, and these are guys that I didn't know were out there, who were like, located on the railroad and want to ship. Uh, so I consider that uh, that positive. Um, also on the trash train, um, uh, I realize all the disparaging and derogatory remarks that SMART uh, has thrown at us, and uh, so some of the politicos from Sonoma County. But we do have a rate uh, offer from the California Northern, um, which means I have the ability to quote a price from origin to destination. And we have an operating time slot with the Union Pacific, which means I have the right to run a train over their railroad uh, in, at night and back. Uh, so in terms of the operational issues of making that a reality, uh, we are continuing to advance. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, thanks for touching on the marketing uh, stuff. We get I get questions, you know, about that all the time. It's hard to answer because I know that there's somewhat of a proprietary thing in there, but um, maybe at some point we can figure out a way to elaborate on that to demonstrate that the, where, you know, how, how much stronger we think it can be. Sure, John. I, I think the best demonstration is to start uh, running, running trains, and I'm not uh, naive enough to 
think we're going to have full trains immediately. I mean, I think the shipping public has to be convinced we're there to stay. But this is a good time, good time, to be running a railroad because the price of fuel is so high. Um, and the truckers have had to price up to keep covering their costs, so it's a good time to run a railroad if we can just get the work done. Yeah. Are those weekly calls from all up and down the line, including up here in the north? No, they're on the on the south end, uh, where where people read the paper and know that we're trying to get the work done and, and get started. Thank you, John. You know, uh, it's been touched on a couple times today that the dynamics have changed so much in terms of uh, what we're trying to do with the railroad and the need for it. And there's this old legacy of information as to why Southern Pacific exited the, the railroad and then why two subsequent organizations went bankrupt. And it's old news. I mean, that was a different world and a different fuel situation. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, this is, you know, the trend lines are really definitely in our direction. So. Thank you. Anything else? Thanks, John. Okay. Uh, matters from the board that we haven't already covered. Is there anything anybody wants to bring forward? Tom? Um, I'm not sure I want to bring it forward. But um, as you are probably aware, last month we had uh, quite a to do about uh, an email exchange between myself and the city of the manager of the city of Nevada. Now, while I'm not anxious to bring it forward, uh, Mr. Neary has requested that I make a statement about that, so I will. Uh, let me just correct that. I think just said that if I were you, I would would correct that. I don't have any preference whether you do or not. Well, let me briefly address that. First, I don't think that there's anything to correct about what I said last month. But, um, I, I will take the opportunity to make a statement um, because I think the public needs to know the facts about this. Uh, <laughs> Some people uh, have made statements that may leave the impression with the public that the legal, the legal process has been compromised and the confidentiality of the NCRA has been violated. And I don't, I, that's just simply not the case. Uh, um, at last month's meeting, a member of the public produced an email from me to Dan Keene, the city manager of Nevada. That member of the public cited this as evidence of my conflict of interest and said that the email uh, was possibly evidence of disclosure of confidential information regarding the Nevada lawsuit. I think that's a fairly accurate characterization of what that member of the public said. Uh, let me assure everyone that I've never divulged any confidential information or attorney-client privileged information of the NCRA regarding that lawsuit. I haven't done that to Dan Keene not to the Nevada City Council, not to the Marin Board of Supervisors, not to any employees of the County of Marin or the City of Nevada, not to anyone. Um, just to clarify it, to make it clear, I've brought with me copies, and I'll, I'll leave it for the board or whoever wants it, uh, of every single email and every piece of correspondence regarding the NCRA that I've had with anybody from the City of Nevada or anybody from the County of Marin. This is a total of nine emails. Five of those emails, I'll point out, since I'm just giving you absolutely everything, five of those emails were months before I was ever appointed to this board. And so I'll leave them with you, but since they were in the June-July period of last year, which was three months before I was appointed to the board, it's pretty hard to say that I disclosed any confidential information in those. By the way, just as a reminder, because dates are very key in this, the, so let's just remind ourselves what the dates involved are. September 28th of 2007 was the date that the Nevada lawsuit was filed. And I may, you may have to correct me on that, but I think that's an accurate date. Uh, Mr. Myers and I were appointed on October 23rd, and we attended our first board meeting on November 1st of 2007. Now, there was three emails from me to Dan Keene that were after the date of my appointment. The first one, and I want to go over these one at a time, I won't 
make, make you listen to all the details of them, but again, the dates are important. The first one was on October 25th. That's two days after I was appointed, a full seven days before the first meeting I ever attended. This is the, the email that a lot of to-do was made about last month. I'll just say that it's hard for me to conceive how, I, how this email or anything I said to Dan Keene on October 25th, which actually I didn't talk to him on that date, but how I could have been divulging confidential classified information seven days before the first meeting that I attended. And yet, you know, if you, the, certainly the impression was, was left and uh, was tried to be made by uh, the member of the public last week that somehow this is some sort of sinister email that divulged confidential information. All I was trying to do in this, inf in this email was say to Mr. Keene, I just got notification that there's going to be a meeting in one week. Actually, I didn't even have an agenda at that point. It was a, uh, an email from Heather saying there's a meeting and it's on signal contract number two. I had no clue what signal contract number two was. I hadn't been to a board meeting. Um, I knew it had something to do with railroad crossings, some of them in Nevada. So I just wanted to know from our city manager or somebody in the city, was there anything that I needed to know about signal contracts? Um, but again, this was seven days prior to my first meeting. Uh, so. I'm not sure how that could be inappropriate or anything to vote. A second email was sent by me on October 29th to Mr. Keene. Again, this is two or three days before the first board meeting I attend. In this email, what I did was forwarded the public agenda or a portion of the public agenda that had been sent to me by Heather. All I did was forward it on to Mr. Keene. By the way, if you read the actual email, there's a no narrative in the email. All I did was forwarded Heather's public agenda right on to Mr. Keene. And then finally, on November 5th, and this is the one and only email after the date that, that I attended a meeting, on November 5th, I again forwarded to Mr. Keene a portion of the November 7th meeting packet, essentially, again, the agenda that was sent to me by Heather, which is public information. By the way, she not only sends it, I noticed on the email, uh, to board members and to staff, but to non-NCRA members who are on her list. I was forwarding it to uh, the public agenda to a member of the uh, public. Um, again, both this email on November 5th and the one on October 29th were merely forwarding of the NCRA's public postings there's no added comment or narrative on my part. Uh, in essence, this is a blank email with an attachment. That's all the email is. There are no more communications of any sort with Mr. Keene or with any employee or council member of Nevada after the November 5th email on any subject relating to the NCRA. And certainly, I don't think in any of these related to the lawsuit. At no time was there a briefing with Mr. Keene, Mr. Walters, or anyone associated with the city of Nevada. Uh, by the way, these three communications, uh, and I, I believe some others, but these three that, were, that I've been focusing on, were provided to Mr. Neary as a result of a uh, discovery request, uh, and I believe he received them in January. I will point out that he had them in his possession for over two months prior to last month's meeting, and he never gave me any indication that there was, uh, during that two month period of time, that there was anything inappropriate or illegal about those communications. Um, I'm the, but I am providing them for your review and, in essence, for public review. Um, at last month's meeting and a number of times since then, a number of people have tried to make something sinister out of these emails. Uh, I don't think that the public is well served by those sorts of uh, allegations and, and those distortions. And for that reason, I'm going to do three things. First, I'm taking all of, or I, I'm requesting 
that these emails be included in the packet that we're submitting to the State Attorney General, uh, where we're asking about conflict of in, the conflict of information question. Let the Attorney General determine if there's anything in the emails that is illegal or represents a conflict of interest. And I'd ask um, that we do that. Second, I'm going to send copies of these emails and all of my correspondence to the Marin Civil Grand Jury. And I'm requesting that that grand jury investigate if there was anything illegal or inappropriate in these communications. The public needs to be assured that confidential information is not being released and that ju judicial proceedings have not been compromised. So let the grand jury investigate it and clarify the record for the public. Third, and this issue has bothered me quite a bit, and one part that really, really does kind of concern me is that members of this board uh, may feel uncomfortable with my presence in closed sessions. I'm very sympathetic to that. I understand that. And that bothers me. And especially if it inhibits them from any way engaging in frank discussions in closed sessions uh, of the legal issues or the strategies. That's not good, and I'm very, very sensitive to that. And I don't think that there's any factual basis for you to be concerned. But I recognize that there is a potential reluctance to speak freely in closed sessions. And that would be unfortunate. So what I'm proposing, or what I'll just put out there is, if one or two directors were to come up to me privately, say in the next few minutes, and just say they have a little bit of discomfort, that they're not sure that, that um, they can freely discuss, or they just feel uncomfortable in the situation, I'll just take the opportunity to go across the street, get a cup of coffee uh, while you're in your closed session, and just enjoy the cup of coffee. And, but let me make one thing about that very clear. I'll, I'll enjoy my cup of coffee, but don't interpret that as me saying there's a conflict of interest or that I'm accusing myself. Um, I think you know from the past that I've tried to stay out of discussions of this in closed session. Um, and so, if that makes somebody more comfortable, um, that's fine. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that, that concludes my remarks. I'd like to, and for all of us to be able to just put this behind us, move on. We have far more important things to discuss. And I would hope that uh, we can just leave this behind. Thank you for your report. Tony? Um, uh, I have two questions. One is, uh, I, I submitted an opinion to the board uh, last month, and I wondered whether it was on the website. I, I don't know. May 2nd, it was posted to the website. So where, where is it? There's a link on the left-hand side that says Director's Memos. Yeah, I talked to uh, uh, Heather about that the day you called me, and she assured me it would be on. I didn't call you back because it was taken care of. Great, thank you. And the others, we uh, talked about, and then there was a memo to all of us about a workshop in August, and I submitted submitted a response, and I, I haven't heard anything more about it. And I, I, I'm, I'm particularly interested in trying to figure out how to get more money. And the, the financial report points out that we should be doing something, and, and I, if we do nothing else in that workshop, and I think we've got plenty to do, that, that would be the topic number one. How does the workshop work in terms of the Brown Act? Uh, it's a public meeting? Or? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think it would be a good idea, personally. I, I'm not, I don't think there's any disagreement. It's just one thing among many that gets caught in the flurry of activity. Sometimes it uh, doesn't get moved forward. How does the rest of the board feel? You know, we well, Mr. About Chairman, I, I think we've talked about this. I think it's uh, incumbent on us and a critical component of NCRA's uh, history do you have a you know, workshop, I know they've been done in the past. The, the important part is getting a date set, uh, and then once that's done, we can develop the uh, agenda. The financial component, I think, is a valid portion, component of the agenda. Um, i got to say that I don't personally remember responding 
Yeah, I was afraid of that. <laughs> did, you, did you ask us when we were available? I did. I, I think on I'm... August 28th at the Ukiah Valley Conference Center, uh, oh. and I've received confirmation except from me. From an unnamed okay. director. Unnamed director. <laughs> so no I longer unnamed. I guess it's self confessed. <laughs> it's in the works, Bernie, and uh, I guess we need to see if we've got the critical mass to make it happen. Well, it sounds like you do. Yeah. You, you've got at least a form. Okay, well, I'll make sure my calendar. <laughs> I don't even know I'm going to be doing two more. I don't know. I'm going to turn off this microphone. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things going on, so I think that that answers that. Um, yeah. Any other uh, matters from the board? But, well, at this point, we'll adjourn to closed session. And uh, Chris, do you have an estimate as to the length of time? I see we've got a number of items on here. I, I would think it would be much more than 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would put us back in here at, uh, say, 2.30. So uh, let's everybody make our way there as quickly as we can and get going with the other business at the end.